In the previous video, we took some time to talk about some of the basics of authentication. Now let's talk about some of the specifics of securing Kafka with SSL and SASL SSL. We're likely all familiar with SSL, if only through the use of secure HTTPS websites. When SSL is enabled for Kafka Listener, all traffic for that channel will be encrypted using the TLS cryptographic protocol. This prevents malicious eavesdroppers from intercepting the traffic. TLS uses digital certificates to verify identities. When a client opens a connection to a broker, it verifies the broker's certificate in order to confirm the broker's identity. So far, so good. The client knows it's speaking to a legitimate broker and that all traffic is being encrypted. But how does SSL provide for authenticating each client to the broker? How can we configure the broker to ensure the Kafka principle associated with the connection represents the client's identity? You can configure the SSL security protocol to require client authentication by setting SSL client auth equals required in the broker configuration. Besides the client verifying the broker's identity, the broker will now verify the client certificate in order to confirm the client's identity. As an aside, you can also set SSL.client.auth equals requested. With this setting, clients with a certificate will be identified using that certificate. Clients that don't have a certificate will be assigned the anonymous user principle. We don't recommend using the requested setting because it introduces a false sense of security. Misconfigured clients will still authenticate successfully to a broker and may be able to perform actions that have been wittingly or unwittingly granted to the anonymous user. As we've seen, TLS uses certificates to identify brokers to clients and clients to brokers. Therefore, if you use the SSL security protocol, you'll need to generate certificates and configure the clients and brokers with the appropriate keys and certificates. You should then ensure that the information is periodically updated before certificates expire to prevent TLS handshake failures. See the Kafka documentation for more details on creating SSL keys and certificates. One final comment regarding certificates. By default, Kafka clients verify that the host name in the broker URL and the host name in the broker certificate match. You can disable this host name verification by setting SSL endpoint identification algorithm to an empty string on the client. This is sometimes useful in development and test environments that use self-signed certificates. However, in production environments, you should always allow hostname verification so as to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. Everything we've said here about client broker authentication using the SSL security protocol applies equally to interbroker communications secured with SSL. In these situations, the broker initiating the connection acts as the client in the client broker relationship. Use the interbroker listener name or security interbroker protocol setting to configure listeners for broker communication. SSL is one of two security protocols that Kafka supports. The other is SASL SSL. SASL stands for Simple Authentication and Security Layer. When you enable the SASL SSL security protocol for a listener, the traffic for that channel is encrypted using TLS, just as with SSL. TLS client authentication, however, is disabled. Instead, you must specify a SASL authentication mechanism. The main reason you might choose SASL SSL over the SSL security protocol is because you want to integrate Kafka with an existing Kerberos server, such as Active Directory or OpenLDAP in your organization. Kafka supports four different SASL authentication mechanisms, of which the most commonly employed is GSS API, which provides for authentication using Kerberos. The other mechanisms include two username and password mechanisms, plain and scramshaw 256 and 512, and OAuth bearer, which is the machine-to-machine -machine equivalent of single sign-on. Each of these mechanisms has some configuration overhead, and in the case of all of them, apart from Scramshot 256 and 512, for production workloads, you'll need to integrate with third-party servers, Kerberos in the case of GSS API, a password server for the plain mechanism, and a trusted OAuth server for OAuth bearer. Your choice of security protocol and authentication mechanism will depend on many environmental and organizational factors. SSL client authentication using client certificates issued by a well-known and trusted certificate authority is ideally suited to cloud environments. While for enterprise environments that already use a Kerberos server such as Active Directory, SASL GSS API is the obvious choice. But don't underestimate the configuration effort involved. We'll wrap up this section with some words of caution. 
Kafka gives you all of the tools you need to implement strong authentication procedures, but your system is only as strong as its weakest part. You may very well have correctly configured the necessary security protocols, listeners, certificates, and so on for authenticating clients and brokers, but configuration is just one part of the solution. Pay careful attention to your infrastructure. Your system comprises many different components, servers, networks, file systems, arrayed across many different environments. Make sure you're using file system permissions to restrict access to files containing security information, such as certificate key stores and key tab files, and avoid storing passwords in plain text anywhere on the system, including Zookeeper. Use disk encryption or a secure external credential store instead. And while Sasol gives you lots of options for integrating with trusted external security infrastructure, these integrations in turn present an additional attack surface that must be locked down. Think too about connection management. Opening a secure connection is an expensive operation. Malicious clients can exploit this to perform denial of service attacks on a broker by attempting to open lots of connections. You can protect the availability of a cluster's brokers using Kafka quotas together with connection failed authentication delay MS setting, which can reduce the rate at which clients retry failed connection attempts. And finally, apply rigorous change control procedures when promoting configurations through environments. We've seen how you can configure Kafka clients to turn off hostname verification and how brokers can be configured to map clients without certificates to the anonymous user principle. These changes can sometimes make it easier to work in development and test environments, but they pose a severe risk for production employments. Left unchecked, you may end up facing difficult to diagnose connection and access control issues, or worse, allowing malicious clients into your system. <laughs>